With the reveal of Jurassic World Evolution's Return to Jurassic Park DLC, sometimes affectionately referred to as the 1993 or Legacy DLC, it sees one of the most exciting features announced for the Evolution game, the introduction of aviaries and flying reptiles. As a result, today we revisit the DLC ID series that brought to attention all the possible dinosaurs that could be added for their connection to the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World universe, appearance in other Jurassic Park related media, or just because of their uniqueness as a spectacular variety. Instead of dinosaurs though, we will obviously be covering the vast and intriguing world of the pterosaurs, the flying reptiles that dominated the skies above the dinosaurs that roamed below them. This video will follow the format of the Continental DLC ID series, where we explore dig sites as opposed to the animals individually, to accommodate the fossil expedition mechanic within the game. Precedence will be given to flying reptiles from dig sites already in the game, but new dig sites will also be suggested depending on their factor of interest. We start with a new formation, and the most likely formation to be introduced into the DLC, the Neobrara Formation of Kansas in the US. This famous formation is the site of, of Neil Charles Marsh's early expeditions, and since then has yielded a rich array of prehistoric marine life, from sharks to famous plesiosaurs, as the Elasmosaurus, or the Jurassic Park reference mosasaur, the Tylosaurus. However, it is also extremely famous for yielding some of North America's most iconic pterosaurs. Pteranodon was revealed during the announcement of the DLC, and is thus the first announced pterosaur of Jurassic World Evolution. It is of no surprise, as it has constantly been a stalwart in the Jurassic Park and World Universe, from its appearance in the first novel to its recent cameo in the short film Battle at Big Rock. Interestingly, there are many variations throughout its appearances, but the one shown in the DLC trailer seems to indicate the Jurassic Park 3 version, which is also a personal favourite. Pteranodon is by far the most common pterosaur unearthed in the world, with over 1,200 specimens uncovered, but its most distinguished remains come from the Neobrara Formation, of which it was discovered by Marsh in 1870. The next suggestion is the larger, close relative, Geosternbergia. The distinct cranial crest is more broader and elaborate than that of Pteranodon, but otherwise both are very similar. Interestingly, it has multiple indirect on-screen appearances in the Lost World Jurassic Park. When Roland Tembo flips through his dino guide on the computer screen in the RV Mobile Lab, as well as concept art and concept model during production of the film. Perhaps this would be enough to see it introduced alongside the Pteranodon. Another unique pterosaur, Nyctosaurus derives from this formation as well, perhaps most famous for its strikingly extended head crest, far exceeding its body length. It is presumed this was an antler-like structure in which was grown and shedded periodically, possibly in tune with the breeding seasons. Nyctosaurus was seen as a smaller contemporary to the Pteranodon, as a secondary variety in the ecological niche, and would be a great accompaniment to the latter, although it lacks any references to Jurassic Park. Moving to Texas, the Javelina Formation is a productive Maastrichtian age formation with many iconic dinosaurs such as Alamosaurus, Taurosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus. But by far the most awe-inspiring discovery was Quetzalcoatlus, part of the Asdarkid family of gigantic pterosaurs. When it was first discovered, it was the largest pterosaur ever with an estimated wingspan of 16 meters. In recent times, this estimate has been refined to a more modest 11 meter wingspan, but it still exceeds many of its contemporaries and even the sizes of dinosaurs. It was taller on the ground than Tyrannosaurus, for instance. Quetzalcoatlus was believed to have preyed on baby sauropods, but may have acted as a scavenging vulture as well, scaring off predators from carcasses. This behemoth is unreferenced in the canon, and its large size will present huge problems in the confined aviary space shown in the trailer, but for such an infamously almost godlike pterosaur, an appearance would prove popular. Some specimens uncovered at Hell Creek Formation could also provide a possible alternative site there for the Quetzalcoatlus, although those remains are still debatable. We venture into South America with the Brazilian Romualdo Formation, part of the famous Santana Group, and one of the most productive fossil sites for pterosaur variety in the entire world. We covered the Romualdo Formation in the Jurassic World Patagonia video, where dinosaurs such as Irritator and Oxalia roamed. 
This formation has been designated as Lagerstata and paints a vivid picture of early Cretaceous coastal Brazil, rich in well-preserved fossils. The first pterosaur from this formation has to be the Sierra Dactylus, another one of the few pterosaurs with strong references in the Jurassic Park canon. Although not much of a notable specimen in paleontology, Sierra Dactylus inhabited the Jurassic Park aviary in the novel and played a pivotal role in the events there, although it has not been mentioned any time since, besides some comic book appearances. Such explicit references will nevertheless make it highly likely considering Frontier has been reaching with their additions. Anhanguera is a well-studied pterosaur that is related to Sierra Dactylus and many others from this formation. Anhanguera doesn't make any film or novel canon references but appears in two games, the Lost World Jurassic Park arcade game and in Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder for the Game Boy Advance. Arguably the most famous pterosaur from this formation is the Tapahara. With its recognisable crest, it is one of the most popular pterosaurs outside the Jurassic Park universe. Indeed, it hasn't been referenced but appears in both mobile games, Jurassic Park Builder and Jurassic World The Game, as well as in the Jurassic Park 3 toy line. It is quite smaller than most other of its contemporaries, such as those in the Onifakuridae family, and thus could supplement as a secondary pterosaur to the larger Ciara Dactylus, for example. Tropiognophus was an exceptionally large member of the Onifakuridae family of albatross-like sea-dwelling fish-hunting pterosaurs. Its body plan is not different from other relatives such as Ciara Dactylus, Anhanguera, or Onifakurus itself to be considered entirely unique, but it is another pterosaur that appears in the mobile Jurassic World the game. A non-canon consideration is the Corpodactylus, a close relative of the Tapahara. Known from a single well-preserved specimen, this has revealed Corpodactylus as one of the largest Tapaharids with an ornate head crest even more defined than Tapahara itself. With one of the largest pterosaur skulls discovered, Phalasodromius had an exceptionally defined crest that makes a standout non-canon variety. Its name is a bit more of a misnomer, as its strong musculature and its jaws suggested capability to bring down prey on land rather than preying on fish out in open water. As a result, this pterosaur was quite a formidable predator. The close relative, Tupushuara, was even larger, had an even more elaborate crest, and perhaps is of greater public fame. This pterosaur has raised in prominence due to several skeletal reconstructions displayed in museums around the world. It also makes an appearance in Jurassic World the game as a tournament legendary. We now move to Patagonia proper in Argentina, to a site that is mostly obscure, besides the fact it yields one of the most recognizable pterosaurs around, the Pterodostro. This pelican resembling pterosaur is most notable for sporting a thousand bristle-like teeth in which it used to strain food from the water as it flies across the surface, similar to modern day filter feeding birds such as flamingos. As such, it is fairly unique and identifiable, though lacking Jurassic Park references. However, it has appeared in several Jurassic Park games as well, as a legendary in the mobile Jurassic World the game. Finally, we end the South American tour with the Allen Formation, also featured in our Jurassic World Patagonia video where we showcase dinosaurs such as Saltosaurus and Ostroraptor. The only pterosaur from this site, but a famous one in its own right, is the Aero Titan, a South American family member of the renowned Asdarkids, the largest pterosaurs on Earth, of which Quetzalcoatlus is also a part of. However, Aero Titan is relatively small for an Asdarkid, despite the deception of its name, and only appears in the mobile Jurassic Park the game as a reference. We move across the Atlantic to Europe, first the southwest of England towards the World Heritage listed site, the Jurassic Coast, where the first specimens of Dimorphodon were discovered in the Blue Lias limestone and shale layers. Dimorphodon is by far the second most famous Jurassic Park universe pterosaur, 36% of its genome was sequenced before the events of the first film, before finally making a full-fledged appearance in Jurassic World, living alongside the Pteranodon in the Avery. Several game and toy line appearances have further cemented Dimorphodon as a crucial pterosaur of the franchise, despite its smaller size. It's likely that Dimorphodon will support the Pteranodon in the upcoming DLC. In England, there is another site known as the Cambridge Greensand of the mid to late Cretaceous that offers a couple of some decently popular pterosaurs, relatives of many from the Romualdo Formation in South America. 
Onifacurus is the namesake of the mostly seagoing, fish-eating pterosaurs with their distinctive notched rosette beaks that encompass this respective family. Otherwise, Onifacurus is unremarkable and is very similar to its cross-Atlantic counterpart, Tropiognophus. Though, the only distant reference of this pterosaur is a prototype for the Jurassic Park Jr. toy line that never officially released. Coloborhynchus is another member from this diverse family, and if the Capito specimen is deemed valid, then Coloborhynchus could be the largest toothed pterosaur yet discovered, exceeding the traditionally largest candidate, Tropiognophus. However, Coloborhynchus is generally considered smaller on average. Regardless, only an appearance in Jurassic World the game is notable. The Solnhofen limestone in southern Germany is a famous site depicting late Jurassic Europe with several iconic specimens of Archaeopteryx and Comsognophus unearthed here. Since Comsognophus is also confirmed for this upcoming DLC, this site is actually a very realistic proposition, alongside its diverse roster of pterosaurs. Of particular note is Pterodactylus, the first ever pterosaur to be discovered. Known from over 30 individual specimens, Pterodactylus is reasonably well studied and well known in popular culture. Often a household name people associate most with, with pterosaurs in general. But surprisingly, Pterodactylus lacks any meaningful references in Jurassic Park canon. Only of note is its skeleton featured in the entrance of the visitor center in the first movie and a string of various game and toy appearances. It has definitely been overshadowed by Pteranodon in this universe. Unlike the short-tailed crested pterodactyls that it inhabited alongside, Rampharynchus is famous for its long, veined tail and needle-like forward-pointing teeth which it used to snatch fish. Based on in-game lore from the Lost World Jurassic Park game, Rampharynchus was bred on Isla Sorna and lived in Habitat D, but it is uncertain how well this information translates into the film canon. The animal makes many more game and toy appearances as well. The close relative Scophognophus also has some passing references in the form of game appearances, most notably in the recent Jurassic World Alive. It is about half the size of Rampharynchus and much more obscure, so its chances of inclusion is fairly dubious. Hadzeg Island in Romania is the famous paleontological site that depicts late Cretaceous fauna isolated on an island setting, with various examples of insular dwarfism occurring in dinosaur species that are much smaller than their mainland European counterparts. Hadzegopteryx, on the other hand, was an example of insular gigantism, becoming one of the largest pterosaurs known in existence, giant even for Asdarkid sizes. Hatsagopteryx would have been the apex predator on this isolated island, a true dinosaur hunter of its time, preying on dwarf titanosaurs, iguanodonts, and even theropods. Also, another pterosaur in the recent Jurassic World Alive, Hatsagopteryx presents an interesting option for a supermassive pterosaur variety. It is considered the second largest pterosaur ever discovered, ahead of Quetzalcoatlus, but behind our next candidate. Discovered on accident near the Jordanian town of Rusefa, the enormous Aramborgiania was originally called Titanopteryx or Titan Wing, a fitting name for the largest pterosaur ever discovered, before scientists realized that name had already been assigned to a fly. Recently in 2016, Aramborgiania remains were also discovered in Coon Creek Formation, Tennessee, extending the range of this beast to North America. The addition of such a large specimen, especially one without any standing in the canon besides an appearance in Jurassic World Alive, is undoubtedly unrealistic, but it is worth a mention and probably would be pretty funny to grace this monstrosity among the other Asdarkids. We take a pit stop to the small Italian town of Chenya, where Eudemorphodon was discovered. This pterosaur is one of the earliest ever uncovered, but is otherwise very obscure and generally forgettable besides its appearance in Jurassic World the game as a legendary. The Kem Kem Beds was a site extensively covered in our Jurassic World Africa video, and recently introduced to accommodate the Kakarodontosaurus in game. Known more as a productive dinosaur dig site, several pterosaurs have also been discovered here, including Alan Carr, named for the mythical Arabian Phoenix. Alan Carr is known only from jaw fragments, but showcases the typical long toothless beak of the Asdarkids, with estimates of its size pertaining it as a medium-sized member of this family. However, despite appearances in Jurassic World the Game and Jurassic World Alive, it's a mediocre inclusion if anything, just to fill out the Chem Chem beds with more variety. 
Colobarynchus is also found at this dig site as well. Moving to our final continent, Asia. The Bisecti Formation is a vanilla dig site that is home to the Archaeoniphomimus. It is also home to the archetypal namesake of the largest pterosaur family on Earth, the Asdarko, named after the mythical Persian dragon. However, this specimen is very fragmentary and as such, the knowledge and fame of this group would not be realized until the discovery of Quetzalcoatlus and Aramborgiania later. It deserves mention but lacks any real substantial reason for inclusion. The Junga Basin in northwestern China is chosen as a singular site to accommodate the Sungaripterus, a unique pterosaur with upward curving jaws that support a long bony crest running along the top. In terms of ornate pterosaur crest, Sungaripterus ranks among the best, and this mild popularity has been reciprocated in its appearances in several Jurassic Park and World games. The Tiao Jishan of northeastern China is renowned for preserving exquisite remains of dinosaurs, particularly the many raptoran ancestors of avian birds complete with feather and skin imprints. This also translates well into preserving pterosaurs, of which a couple here are steadily increasing in popularity. As the largest member of the Anaerognophids, identifiable for their short snouts that are wider than they are long, Jeholopterus is a prime example of this family. Armed with peg-like teeth useful for snapping at insects, these smaller pterosaurs have been discovered with fur-like fibres on their skin and resemble earless bats. A more typical pterosaur would be Darwinopterus, however this specimen is special because it shows a transitional example from the evolution of the primitive earlier Rampharynchoids to the more advanced later Pterodactyloids. Darwinopterus displays features common to both, with a vein tailed but also a long crested skull. Darwinopterus also appears in Jurassic World the game and Jurassic World Alive. Close by the early Cretaceous Yixian formation is famous for the Eutyrannus in particular, or the feathered tyrant, but it also showcases a wide variety of Asian pterosaurs. Perhaps the most striking pterosaur from this formation is Chenuanopterus, which sports an unusual crest on the top of its long snout, equipped with interlocking teeth that it uses to catch its fish prey in this lake environment. A famous candidate from this formation is Phalongus, a stork-like member of the same family as Pterodostro, and thus uses similar filter feeding behaviour to sift prey from the water. Or Gladocephaloideus, known from some of the best preserved pterosaur remains ever found. These smaller candidates present interesting alternatives for fish-eating pterosaurs, but all do not feature in any capacity in the Jurassic Park universe. The final site with our final pterosaur is the Tangshang Formation, yielding the Zhejiang Opterus, arguably the most famous pterosaur coming from China, and the most complete as dark it found in the world. Despite this, it is much smaller than the typical giants from this family, but it is featured in Jurassic World the game. That ends our analysis of the best pterosaur candidates for Jurassic World Evolution's new Avery feature in the upcoming DLC. So. Which of these do you think will grace the game? How many pterosaurs will Frontier add? And do you think the studio will consider non-canon pterosaurs for variety, or stick to those that have made appearances already? Keep in mind, it is also possible that pterosaurs can be added in future DLCs to complement the introduction of Avery's in this DLC, so we can well and truly see much more pterosaurs later on. As always, hope you guys enjoyed today's content. Subscribe for some more Jurassic World Evolution videos in the near future as we explore the upcoming DLC and catch you guys later.